The following video is sponsored by MobileMaddenCoins.com. If you're looking for Madden coins on any console or platform, be sure to check out MobileMaddenCoins.com. Use code CLICKWID for a 10% discount. Hey, what is going on guys? Clickwood here back again with another Madden 17 video. And guys, today what we have is a tuning update for the game. This is going to improve gameplay. Well, it should improve gameplay, but we'll see what ends up actually happening on the field. I want to hear from you guys before I even start explaining things. Let me know in the comments section below some of the things that you've noticed that have been updated or things that have somehow gotten broken since this tuning update. Because unfortunately, we've seen in the past when they do these tuning updates, a lot of times it ends up breaking other other elements of the game so you got to let me know in the comment section below if there are some other things that are messed up because of this now with that said guys let's get into the tuning update this is coming directly from EA themselves so we're actually getting some good information on exactly what's getting tuned and kind of roughly at least how much it's getting tuned um, so this is for the Xbox one and the PlayStation 4 doesn't sound like the 360 or the PlayStation 3 are getting these updates I don't really know how many people still play on those consoles Honestly, I just found out like a couple of weeks ago that they actually still have the game for those systems. So, um, unfortunately, I'm not sure that those people are going to be getting any of these updates. But uh, here are the things that we're seeing for Madden 17 gameplay updates. So, the first thing, increased interception chances for user-controlled defenders in multiplayer catches. Now, I believe that this has to do with maybe catching traffic. Maybe they boosted that a little bit for defensive players. Um, and also, I think that this might also end up actually helping uh, when we're talking about like spectacular catch type things and, and stuff like that. Who knows exactly what they're actually tuning with this, but the nice thing is that you're going to get kind of a little bit more of a bonus for user controlling a defender than what you currently do. A lot of people, when they see those streaks go up, they just let the computer control it because the computer, at least to some extent this year, does a pretty decent job of swatting away passes um, using the, the SWAT feature, the square button on the PlayStation 4 um, to actually knock the ball out of the receiver's hands. But in this case, it actually kind of sounds like, especially if you've got multiple defenders there, you definitely want to kick on, uh, click on and actually hit that triangle button and try to get the interception if you can. Now, it is a little bit risky because, of course, it can always go to the receiver, but I think it's going to be a nice little improvement to get that little extra bonus for actually having good users on defense. Second thing and the third thing both have to do with the kick meter. So the accuracy, I guess, was being affected pretty heavily by rain and snow conditions. I hadn't really noticed this a whole lot. I, granted, I don't really play a whole hell of a lot of game modes where the weather is a huge factor, but... Uh, apparently that was a big thing, so they reduced the uh, penalty that you get for being in rain and snow when you're kicking field goals. My personal opinion is that the, the kick meter needs to be made a little bit easier just in general online. I don't really miss extra points or field goals in, when I'm playing by myself as far as in solo challenges and stuff like that. But when you play online, you, even if you just have like a slight little bit of lag, it completely screws up your kick meter. So, uh, and, and then there, of course there are times where you kick it and it goes all the way to the top and then it doesn't register that you click the button in and then it goes all the way back down to the bottom and you kick it like six yards out of bounds. So unfortunately there are still some issues with kicking, I think. Um, a couple other things that I know a lot of people were pretty pissed about before. Uh, they increased the wait time for pass rushers to play shed moves when pass rushing. So basically what they're saying is that the, the people were complaining about insta sheds. So like instant block sheds as soon as the play started on pass plays. So your defensive line would get to the quarterback almost immediately. Sounds like they reduced that quite a bit. Now, I will say that I haven't experienced that too much, but... I know for a fact that uh, that a lot of the top competitive people were complaining about that. So, of course, it makes sense that they would have made those changes. Um, you know, it's it's going to be difficult now to get after the quarterback because they've taken away what Rota referred to as nano blitzes. The block sheds are being reduced a little bit. It's going to be tough to get after the quarterback, man. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to say that, you know, you can still send edge blitzes and things like that. And a lot of blitzes still work and stuff, but... It's still going to be tough, in my opinion, to uh, to send pressure. So something to think about anyway. Um, maybe a positive, maybe a negative in some ways, but uh, definitely a change that they're making either way. Next thing, a variety of tuning changes to help defense be more effective against running plays. Thank you. I have had such a problem with this game. You pretty much have to sell out to stop the run in this game so far this year. I mean, look at all the people running the the power G and the, the half X stretches and uh, even some of the tosses, the standard power O offense 
offenses, like the, your um, the lead blockers, uh, you know, when you've got a ton of lead blockers and things like that, it just seems so overpowered. And even when you're running like a base 3-4, a 4-3, or even like a 4-6 defense, you'll still get freaking smashed by the run. It, and I've heard from a lot of people the best way to stop edge rushing before this was to run dime and nickel defenses. And, and that's just because you've got more guys on the edge, which does make sense to some extent. The problem, of course, is that your guys on offense should still get there to, to block those players. So, um, you know, I think that this is a good thing, hopefully. Hopefully we get guys playing contain a little bit more than they currently do on the edges so that those edge rushes just aren't ridiculously OP. The other thing, though, is that I don't want it to be that running is not effective at all. Uh, and I'm a little bit concerned that that might be the issue here. So i got to know from you guys, is the tune too much on the running plays? you got to let me know in the comment section below on that before I get started and just get smashed by people while I try to run the ball. Uh, next thing, reduce the frequency of organic knockouts after catches. Now, I think this has to do with when your receiver's maybe going over the middle and he makes a catch on the ball, but then a few steps later he's going to end up dropping it. And that's because of contact typically. Now, it's not usually a fumble. It's just a drop. And I know a lot of us have experienced that as being a, a major thing. And it doesn't really even seem to matter who your receiver is. It could be a silver receiver. It could be an elite receiver like, you know, an A.J. Green or uh, an Antonio Brown. It doesn't matter. Those guys are still dropping passes in even just the slightest bit of traffic. And I think that's what's being tuned here. Next thing, reduce chances of broken tackles for ball carriers. Now, Again, they're affecting the running game. They're making some improvements that a lot of people have complained about. Is it going to be too much? Are they going to go too much in the opposite direction? Is running no longer going to be a part of Madden? I don't know. Um, I mean, I'm sure, obviously, it's not going to just completely go away. But are people going to be as balanced as they have been, at least so far in this game? I know a lot of people are actually running run-heavy offenses right now. I've played people that pretty much have only ran the ball almost the entire game, other than maybe throwing in a play-action pass here and there. And it's somewhat effective. So, uh, you know, maybe that'll help kind of reduce that a little bit and add a little bit more balance to the game. Couple other things, uh, they slightly reduce the throw out of sack fumble chances. So this is as you're throwing the ball and you get sacked. A lot of times you're fumbling the ball right now, or at least previously to when these when this patch came out. Um, I, I think that this is going to be a good update. I hope, but I would like to see a little bit more than slightly reduced. I mean, obviously, I think that in the past we didn't have enough of this, but this year it's like any time that your quarterback gets hit practically, if he's in the pocket, he's practically fumbling. And it seems like the defensive line is picking it up and running for a touchdown practically every single time. So that's a little bit frustrating. Um, a couple other things here. The final two things have to do with running backs and cut blocking. So it's reducing the chance uh, of the, uh, the running back actually attempting to do a cut block and then also reducing the success rate for the running backs doing a cut block. Now, I'm not sure exactly how this was tuned previously. Uh, as far as I understand it, your running back is still kind of based on their actual pass block attribute. So my opinion is that the running backs that have good pass block should do that kind of a thing more often, or they should stonewall blitzing defenders more often. And the guys that suck at doing it, they should get freaking train wrecked. You know, they should basically just kind of get in the way of the guy a little bit, impede his, his movement just a little bit, and that's about it. Um, there are a lot of guys out there in the NFL that suck at run blocking for running backs, and that's why they're not on the field on third downs. But in Madden right now, there's almost no reason to not have your beast running back out there on third down, even if he sucks at pass protection, just because, and even if you're leaving him at pass protection, even if he sucks, it doesn't really seem to matter that much. So I do like the fact that they're changing this a little bit. Again, I would like to make sure, of course, that it's still your, your pass block attribute is still king and it's not just animation based, but hopefully uh, that is the case. So with that said, guys, those are the major tuning updates. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you did, do me a favor and drop a like on this video. I will leave a link to this blog in the description below as well, so you guys can go check it out for yourselves if you're interested. Thanks so much, and good luck with all the uh, gameplay updates. Again, guys, let me know in the comment section below if there are any crazy things that you've seen since this tuning update, or if you're seeing just really a, an improvement in the gameplay. Hopefully that's the case. I hope it is, but you know, usually there's some other issues that come up with it as well, and we want to know that stuff as soon as possible so thanks again guys hope you enjoyed the video if you did do me a favor drop a like on it subscribe to the channel if you're new and i'll talk to you guys again soon